It doesn't really matter what Colorado's going to do. You see the Blues tell the Avalanche by 10 points. It's the Detroit Red Wings, the Blues, two games in hand. It would be nice to get to second place, which would be first in the Central Division, and that's where they want to be so that you get some extra home ice advantage. I think it's very important for them right now. Grading deadline, of course, was last Tuesday. The Blues made some deals, and the big man they picked up, of course, was number seven. That's Keith Kachuk. Keith Kachuk is going to be much more comfortable tonight. You can see the presence that he brought the other night in Minnesota. Very physical hockey player. He can score goals with the best of them. He has 29 goals on the season. He didn't score, but you're going to see how many times he was involved in the corners, in the scuffles, all over the ice. It'll be nice to get him scoring again. He was very hot in Phoenix. He had 17 points in his last 11 games. So he's a guy that can do it all, Kenny, and I'm sure that he's going to start soon. Well, it'll be nice if he got rolling tonight. We sat with him a few minutes ago and asked Keith, did you feel nervous in Minnesota? Absolutely, I did. Uh, you know, it, it happened so quick. I got in that day and uh, basically got thrown to the wall. So uh, it was tough. I felt uh, nervous, but hopefully that's behind me and I can go out and just concentrate on playing hockey now. And, and uh, you know, I'm old enough now. I shouldn't be getting nervous. The Blues, of course, made a deal with his Calgary Flames team and picked up a fella by the name of Corey Stillman. Corey Stillman wasn't that comfortable either, but this is a kid that is 27 years old. You see his numbers. He was the first round pick of the Calgary Flames back in 1992, six overall. So he does know how to score 21 goals on the season. I think he's going to really help the Blues offensively. I think he's going to be a little nervous tonight, too, coming back to his former teammates and playing here in Calgary. But this is a guy I think that really is going to really add to the offense for the Blues. That's something that's very important. Craig Conroy, on the other hand, Kenny, this is unusual for us to see him in a Calgary Flames uniform. I think he's going to really have a lot extra zip in his uh, skates tonight. He really is a guy that has a great heart. I'm going to miss him, in, not in a Blues uniform, but unfortunately, you have to give up players to get players, and unfortunately, Craig was one of those guys that had to go. And when you look at the goaltender tonight, it's Roman Turek. Joel Quinville really making a statement that that's his man for the playoffs. I think so, especially the way Brent Johnson played the other night. Brent got that one nothing shutout, but he's going with his big guy. We all felt that Roman Turek was the number one guy, the veteran goaltender that's really going to have to lead the Blues into the playoffs, so it'll be nice to Roman to get some confidence to start playing a lot of hockey and hopefully get ready for the playoffs. 11 games remaining, including tonight. We're glad you're with us. The National Hockey League, the Blues, ready to go to work here at the Saddle Dome in Calgary against the Flames. Welcome back to the Pengo Saddle Dome here in Calgary, Alberta. Take a look at the Dodge starting goaltender, Roma Turk, back between the pipes. His record, six games over 500. A goals against average at 2.37. A save percentage just under 90%, and he'd like to get that up. At the other end, it's going to be Fred Brathwaite for the Calgary Flames. You see his record, two games below 500. He's also two games below 500 in his career against the Blues. His goals against average right at 2.42. The officials this evening, the two referees, Dan Mirwelli and Dean Warren. The linesmen are Darren Gibbs and Troy Sardison. So we're just about ready to go. A less than capacity crowd here on St. Patrick's Day evening in Calgary to watch this one. The Blues two weeks ago tonight here lost in overtime three to two. They have already beaten the Flames twice in St. Louis, 4-3 back in October, and 4-1 in a game in February. So we're set to go. Terja faces off with Conroy, and the puck to Derek Morris. He plays the puck to Robin Regeer. 
ahead and the puck tipped in by Ronald Petrovicki up the boards from Turek to Young. Here is Corey Stillman playing with Terzai and Young. The pass deflects high off Young and Ronald Petrovicki back on with Conroy. Also on this line with Conroy is Chris Clark. A shot by Stillman. Good save by Fred Brathwaite. Finley pinches in to Corey Stillman. He spun around a bit trying to force the puck out Clark and finally Conroy shoots it out and back to play it is Sean Hill. He overskates the puck. Turek flips it to the corner. The team's changing. Jeff Chance there leaves the puck. Hill knocks down Petrovicki. Hesh feeds the puck over to Finley. Finley up at center ice. The pass for Kachuk broken up and Hill will come back. Sean Hill flips the puck up the boards to Drake. Weimer knocks it down. Drake trying to get it back to Hill who takes out Chance. Here's Bryce Salvador up to Kachuk who's on with Hesh and Drake. This is Dallas. Drake to Kachuk. Kachuk trying to get a shot. Can't. Brathwaite smothers the puck. Well, Bernie, let's early here in the going take a look at our keys to tonight's game brought to everyone by Toyota. The one thing that we really feel the Blues have to do, they have to pick up the emotion. This team has really kind of been in a lull. They need to just get going and get things going all eight cylinders at once, and they need to score a first goal. They've only done it four times in their last 18 games, and we all know when you get the lead, it's a heck of a lot easier to play this game, and you certainly win a lot more games when you're scoring first. We'll see if the Blues can accomplish that. Reasoner now will face off with veteran Ron Sutter, the 37-year-old, joining the Flames recently after working out on his own since being released last fall by San Jose. Mark Savard gets the puck out, and Gusarev has it ahead for Mellonby intercepted. Now Reasoner comes back to take the puck to Sasha Havanoff. Havanoff gives the puck back to Gusarov. Now the Blues having trouble getting out of their own zone. Burry in there. He's tied up by Alexei Gusarov and up the boards. Barteshko can't clear. Savard can't keep the puck in. Reisner takes it. He's got Valerie Burry back with him. Reisner centers tipped off the stick of Brathwaite. Back the other way come the Flames. Savard who had the overtime goal to beat the Blues two weeks ago tonight. Both teams will change. Buck knocked down by Savard and taken away by Havanoff. Up to Drake late in the shift to Hesht. Drake now gives the puck back to Hesht and the teams continue to change. No score very early. Off the boards for Keith Kachuk. Moving into the slot. Great chance. He waits. He fires. He scores! His first goal with the Blues. Keith Kachuk. And on this night in Calgary, the Blues do score the first goal. That's a pretty goal. We talk about Keith Kachuk, the skill, the power, the everything that he's got. And this is he epitomizes what he can do out there as this is end to end and this is the power board. This is great moves and what a move on Freddie Baragway. But look at this coming across the blue line. Dallas Drake going to the net just faked it went all the way across waited until Bradway went down and then fired this up over top of his outstretched arm. So what a goal by Keith Kachuk and that's a highlight reel right there again as his 30th of the season gives the Blues a one nothing lead. Pretty impressive. What a great way to start. Wilm gets the puck ahead and it's played in by Chance. Turned up to Kachuk by Hesh then a pass to Drake too far. Regeer gets the puck ahead too far for Weimer. And here are the Blues. Salvador up to Jokin Hesch playing center tonight. He stops. Drake comes in, takes the puck, takes a shot. It hits Robin Regeer. Then Clark Wilm trying to get away in the corner. Can't. Drake gets a chance. Big shot and a big save by Fred Brathwaite, who smothers the puck. Another good scoring chance by this line. Interesting line combination having Hesch in the middle with Kachuk and Drake. And Drake and Kachuk know each other so well, but looking at the goal again, you just look at the power here. You're going to see Dallas Drake is going to go through the middle here, and this would set the tone here. That's why Kachuk's able to cut across into the middle. And look at this move here, and then no chance for Fred Brathwaite. So what a play there, and 
What a great goal. You can see the smile on his face. That's a lot better than it was the other night in Minnesota. He really was a lot more nervous, and you can see there, I think he's pretty relaxed after that one. Uh, he is now his 30th at 224. Gusarov and Hesh assisting. Here's a shot by Finley tipped away. Dwayne Hay takes the puck for Calgary. Doesn't make the play after eluding Hill and back is Finley off the boards. Housley keeping the puck in. Eastwood gets it, loses it, and it's Bryce Salvador again. Check it, Finley, and Finley's pass by Mayers the length of the ice, and it's touched first by Mayers, so there's no icing. Reed Simpson in the corner to Jamal Mayers looking for Eastwood. The shot stopped by Brathway. And the puck along the boards and cleared out by Calgary. With the puck, Sean Hill. He gets to the red line, shoots it in. Both teams are changing. Here's Phil Housley. His name was bannered about at the trading deadline. He ends up staying here. Conroy a feed. Too far on the wing for Holy Sabrikin, and the Blues play the puck. Onto the stick of Hill, up to Young. The pass gets by him. Here's Regeer. Back to Morris, back to Regeer. It's center ice to Conroy, who's on with Petrovicki and Clark. Calgary unable to work in. Conroy leaves the puck, and here's Petrovicki slapping it deep into the blue zone. 4-10 gone, first period here in Calgary, and the Blues are already up 1-0. They send the puck down the ice. Craig Conroy will go back. The Blues are changing again. The Blues now send out the Kachuk line again with Heston Drake as the puck is shot in by Ronald Petrovicki, and we've got a whistle and a stoppage in play. And an offside call against Calgary. I can see the emotion, Kenny, already is a lot higher. One of our keys, and you can just see they had a couple of scoring chances. Stillman, a good scoring chance in the first shift, and then they all seem to just pick it up. And a great goal by Kachuk like that. And now this team seems to be finding that emotion that we really didn't see a lot maybe for the last three or four weeks. Uh, it's been tough to find, certainly. I think a huge letdown in that second game at home when. Pronger was back, broke his arm. They got a win in that game. I believe it was a 7-2 win yep. uh, that they picked up, but still they really haven't been the same since then, and they know now with 11 games remaining, they've got to pick it up with Pronger and McGinnis or without them. Kachuk stopped. Here's Jochen Hesch. Hesch looking for Kachuk in front, sends the puck out there, intended for Kachuk. Drake actually gets closer, and the puck cleared out off Weimer's glove. Sent ahead and controlled at the defense by Dallas Akins. He'll get the puck over to Albaline. He gets to the red line, shoots it in. Turek can't stop the puck. Here's Weimer, slowed up a bit by Todd Reardon, who scoops the puck up to Barteshko, slowed up by Savard. And out at center ice, the pass eludes Drake. He'll one hand the puck in as the teams are changing again. This is Phil Housley pulling away from Barteshko. Up the right wing to Valerie Burray. Now to Mark Savard. Again, Lemoux's in front of the net as the puck goes behind the net. He plays it on the boards. Tony Lidman moves in also, and the Blues able to clear the puck out. It deflects down the ice. Housley will go back. The St. Paul, Minnesota native leaves the puck for Burray. Millen be all over him. And here's Housley again. Well traveled defenseman who played with the Blues for a while. The feed for Valerie Burray goes the length of the ice. And Alexei Gusarov touches the puck, so it's an icing against Calgary. Well, mark your calendar for a week from today, the 24th. Stanley Cup playoff tickets for the first round will go on sale at all Ticketmaster outlets. For more information, call 314 622 Blue. First round Stanley Cup playoff tickets go on sale next Saturday at all Ticketmaster outlets. Not that far away, is it? Three weeks left in the season. That's it. The 11 games, including this one, the Stanley Cup playoffs begin Wednesday, April the 11th. The Blues conclude the regular season at home Saturday, April the 7th. And the Blues hoping that it is a long playoff run. Last season, one round. The season before that, a couple. It's been since 86 since they've gone to the third round. Having off a shot off a leg into the corner. Puck played ahead and out to center ice. Here is Hay trying to move in on Havanoff. Almost gets a shot and a big collision and the net comes loose. Gusarov and Havanoff doing just enough to stop Dwayne Hay. Then Gusarov and Ron Sutter have words and fortunately 
Roman Turek is all right. It's amazing here. Hey, even tried to hit Turek. You'll see him come down the wing. He gets tripped here by Havanov, and he gets up, and now he just kind of runs right into Roman Turek. He didn't try to avoid him or not. You'll see it better from this end. Watch this. He goes down his knees. Now he gets back up, and now just body checks Roman Turek. Not supposed to do that, Kenny. Hey, you can't do that. No. That's no good. That should have been a penalty. That, I mean, he didn't try to avoid it. He, he easily, when he was sliding, got up. His momentum had really stopped him, and he yeah. makes an extra, if you will, stride or two and runs into him. And puts his shoulder down to hit yeah. Roman Turk. That doesn't make any sense. You want to slide, hit him in the pads, and everybody's happy. But it's no penalty. Now Ron Sutter faces off against the Blues' Mike Eastwood. Three seconds shy of the six-minute mark. First period. Keith Kachuk has already scored, so the Blues are up one to nothing. The Blues have five shots on goal. The Flames have not tested Roman Turek yet. Now they're going to get excited. I believe Eastwood's waved out. Jamal Mayers will come in. Simpson, Eastwood, and Mayers up front. Hill on defense with Finley in front of Turek. Sutter and Mayers. Mayers wins the draw. Here's Finley. Over to Hill. Now the puck goes the length of the ice. Tommy Alvaline back to touch it. And an icing call against the Blues. Salvador shot off Mayers skate. He gets Salvador shot off Mayers skate. He gets hacked by Sutter and bumped by Ron Sutter. Up to Oleg Saprikin. His rink wide pass is too far for Dallas Akins. Uh, Reardon gets the puck ahead to Terja. Far wing to Young. He'll let her go. And the shot goes wide. Ronald Petrovicki to center ice. Slowed up by Terja. Tries to get the puck in. Down on his knees. Can't make a play. Does a nice job battling on. And then Clark is just offside at the St. Louis Blue Line. 7.05 gone. one nothing Blues. Keith Kachuk getting the Blues goal and we talked to him before the game and said with 11 games remaining is this enough time for the Blues to gel prior to the playoffs. Absolutely, I mean, it gives us plenty of time. Uh, you know, it's nice to be on the road for a couple extra days, get to know your teammates, but especially on the ice uh, practicing and going over some things. Obviously, the lines aren't set in stone yet, so uh, we'll be playing with uh, different people and hopefully by the playoffs uh, come we'll be uh, used to each other. Blues win the draw. Kachuk with the goal, his 30th at 224. Turgeon out there with Stillman and Young. Calgary shoots the puck in. Salvador and Reardon on defense. Up the middle, Corey Stillman. Pass for Young, tipped away by Clark. And here comes Calgary. Conroy, two on one, shoots! Off the post! Off the post, he looked to pass to Clark. Had Turek going the wrong way and almost surprised him. Now the puck. Weimer after it. He gets hit, bounces off Salvador. Weimer stopped behind the net. Then he takes his man down, and there'll be a penalty. He dumps Reardon, and the penalty will be called here against Jason Weimer. The Flames with a good scoring chance, but Craig Conroy didn't bury it, and the continuation of the forecheck, and Weimer just a little too over-aggressive. You see him with the hook here on Todd Reardon. Reardon does a nice job falling down there the referee behind him is the one who makes the call Weimer didn't like it but a great shot by Craig Conroy you see the two on one he looked off the pass had Turek cheating a little bit and then he hit that one high and it went right off the inside of the post you see over the right shoulder of Roman Turek right there and then went back and came outside in Philadelphia that shot hit his back and went in on that shorthanded ever by Manderville but this one went out and didn't hit him so a good break there for the Blues. Good shot by Conroy. He played that very well. He looked off the pass. Roman Turk had to cheat a little bit. And a great shot. But the Blues now a great opportunity here on this power play to get the lead to two. So Calgary will be shorthanded. Their penalty killing is not good at all. The Blues power play has been strong. There is Greg Gilbert, of course, replaced Don Hay as head coach Wednesday. Hay was in his first season here. Gilbert was an assistant. Four seasons prior, he, of course, was the head coach of the Worcester Ice Cats in the AHL, the Blues' prime farm team. So the Blues know Gilbert. Gilbert knows the Blues. The Blues power play, 12th in the league at 18%. Calgary's penalty killing only 79%, 28th in the 30-team NHL. The Blues are up one to nothing. 
This is Havanoff. Hesh tips the puck in. Havanoff and Gusarov on the points. Regeer up the boards for Will, who runs into Gusarov, and the puck shot down the ice by Jeff Chance. The Blues have Mellonby up front with Hesh on the power play. And also, not surprisingly, Kachuk, who takes the pass here. His feet over to Jokin Hesh. Moving in on Regeer. Hesh to the point to Havanoff. He'll let her go. And the save by Graf Wade, and the puck trickles wide. Kachuk almost deflected that one in front. Kachuk gets the puck from Petrovicki to Gusarov. Over to Havanoff. He shoots again. And a good save by Brathwaite. Boy, it was Mellonby and Brathwaite's face. Ron Sutter gets the puck off Petrovicki. Then finally gets it back. Moving in with Morris. Pass eludes Morris. Blues have the power play. Here is Pierre Turgeon. One nothing Blues. Nine minutes into the first period. Still 47 seconds to go in the man advantage. Turgeon with a puck. Now to Marty Reisner. Back for Pierre Turgeon. Right in front of the net. The Blues doing some screening. Stillman. Reisner a pass. He scores! Kind of banks it in. It may have gone off Stillman. Marty Reisner makes the play. A power play goal. And the Blues are up two to nothing. I believe you're right. I think this did hit Stillman's skate, Kenny, and went in. But again, the Blues get good movement on the power play. You see on the side boards, Turgeon is going to move it down deep to Marty Reisner. Reisner takes a step out. He was trying to make the pass. It actually did hit the stick of Stillman. It wasn't his skate. He got his stick on it. So Stillman scores his first as a Blue, too. And the Blues are going to lead 2-0 now. But you can see here the pass. Stillman standing in front of the net. Now pass right onto the tape of Stillman, and he just dishes it by Freddie Brathwaite. Another look from the overhead. You'll see the blade get on it and then fire it right past Brathwaite. So the two newcomers with a goal each. Blues lead by two. Number 22 for Stillman. It's sweet music as Kachuk and Stillman score. You can't ask for more out of the trading deadline and only their second game. So the team's back at full strength. Jeff Finley shoots the puck in. Rathwaite will play it. Plays it away from defenseman Tony Lippman up the boards. Right wing to Burry. The crowd happy for Stillman. Then Housley a shot and a glove save by Roman Turek. And a whistle stops play. The crowd, of course, very fond of Stillman giving him a big hand. This is a design play on a power play. If you can get the defenseman down in deep here, you're going to see this is a three-way passing play. And it's very easily done. And they had the defenseman in the right spot. Marty Reisner is going to walk out from behind the net. You see Stillman in front. And he's got his stick on the ice. That's a lesson for the kids out there. Put your stick on the ice. And if you got a good passer, he's going to put it on your tape. You just have to redirect it. And that's exactly what Reisner did, and Stillman was in perfect position. There are the shots in the period, 7-1. That's what you used to always tell the wingers, right? Just put the frickin' thing on the ice. I'll take care of the rest. That's right. Put your stick down. Put your stick down. Maybe move it a little when I give it to you, but don't do much. That's right. You don't put your stick four feet in the air. It's hard to hit that pass up that high without a baseball glove. That's right. I'll hit it. You be there. Don't get fancy. Exactly. Don't need to be fancy. That's right. I'm 24. I'll be fancy. You stand there. <laughs> A good lesson to learn. Do what you can do. Here's Corey Stillman to Terja with Young. And Conroy ends up with a puck. Plays it over far side. Derek Morris, who was a holdout early in the season. Let's a shot go and a bad save by Turek. He really tests him. Salvador to Havanoff. Back for Bryce Salvador up to Jochen Hesch. Both clubs are changing. He'll tee it up, shoots it high and wide. Jerome McGinley back. McGinley has not been the same McGinley against the Blues this season that he has been in prior seasons. He's always been the, the overpowering, really strong, talented. We haven't seen as much from him. Here he is here. He kind of trips over the stick of the Blues player Reardon, and there's going to be a penalty call here, so Todd Reardon will go off. Stillman scores from Reisner and Turgeon, 9-14. Blues the trade deadline. Both have scored tonight. The Blues lead the Calgary Flames 2-0. Blues out shooting Calgary 7-2. 9-12 left first period. Savard between Aginla and Bure. The Blues shorthanded here. Reardon tripping at 10:48. Morris a shot blocked in front. He's at the right point. Housley's at the left point. Hesh trying to get the puck. Can't. 
Kept in by Morris over here to Housley. Good bad save. Rebound. And again, somehow shoots wide. Had the entire net. Burray Savard. Back to Burray. He shoots the puck right into Gusarov, who's on defense with Havanoff, who gets knocked down by Aginla. Savard. Burray fires one off Hesh stick, and that sails into the crowd. Flames with a good scoring opportunity. You're right. I don't know how Aginla missed this one, Kenny, but the original shot, the deflection. You see the angle here of the Phil Husley shot. It came right out into the slot, and there's Aginla. He actually slid it along the eyes and missed the far side. Here's a better look from the overhead. There's the original shot. Look at that one. He had the entire net to shoot at, but he put it too far to the side of Roman Turek, so the Blues dodged one there. Eastwood, Young, Salvador, and Finley killing the penalty to the point to Housley. Over here to Morris. Wrist shot, stick saved by Turek. Again, Les Savard and Burray still up front. And the Blues, Young, able to backhand the puck the length of the ice. Drake on the penalty kill now, replacing Eastwood. A minute five to go in the power play for Calgary. Here's Burray. Calgary's power play, 19th in the league. At home, though, 28th. They're successful only 12% of the time in the power play at home. Only two teams are more futile at home on the power play than Calgary. Again, the shot block. Conroy on the power play. Comes out in front. The pass. Albany the shot and the save. Rebound. They score. Burray is there. A power play goal for Calgary. And they cut the Blues lead to 2-1. to one. It's pretty obvious what the Flames want to do. They want to get shots to the net and then just everybody converge and go for rebounds. And that's what exactly happened here. I don't like what Melby does. You'll see good movement. Conroy moving the puck back to the point and everybody to the net. Again, was there. He knocks the puck free and Burry comes in from the side and is able to just get that into the open net. But a good play by the Flames going to the front of the net. And Burry finishing it off there, you see Everybody in front of the net. Good work by the Flames and a power play goal for Burry. Burry has his 24th. So the Blues lead is cut in half and the puck in the Calgary zone. Turgeon tries it loose from Dallas Akins. Centers for Kachuk. Alvalde intercepts. Hits Turgeon in front for Stillman. Tipped away by Akins, who once played with the Blues. Blues puck. Sean Hill moves in. Body to the boards by Jeff Shantz, who gets the puck loose. Far corner for Alvalde. Willem up front with Weimer and Shantz. And Calgary gets the puck out. Kachuk back to Hill, and the puck skips over his stick. Murray's 24th goal, a power play goal from McGinley and Albaline at 12-10. So after the early Kachuk goal, both teams have scored a power play goal. As the teams change, Barteshko intercepts at center ice to Marty Reisner. He'll fire the puck in. Mellon the other forward with Barteshko and Reisner. In the corner, Reisner for the Blues. Sends the puck behind the net. The Blues have Havanoff and Gusarov on defense. Big hit by Conroy on Mellonby. Reasoner trying to get a little room to Barteshko. He can't get away from Akins. Mellonby tripped in front of the net by Chris Clark. And here's Craig Conroy. You would figure he would play well tonight. And the puck shot down the ice. Back to play at Havanoff. And the team's changing on the fly. Petrovicki hits Havanoff. Chris Clark to Ronald Petrovicki to Mark Savard in front. Chris Clark poke check by Reed Simpson. Havanoff, a pass intended to the near wing for Mares gets away, and finally Reed Simpson slaps the puck in. Tony Lidman, the youngster from Finland, with the puck. The Blues are up two to one, out shooting Calgary for the period most of the way. They were up 7-1 in shots. Now it's 7-7. So Calgary has come back. Aginla gets the puck in deep. Here's Salvador up the far wing. Housley pinches in. Savard gets bumped down by Salvador. Aginla hit by Simpson. Salvador trying to pry the puck loose. Good work by Aginla to Savard. And then Reed Simpson intercepts. He'll just clear the puck out. At center ice, Phil Housley. Nice feed for Aginla. 
Into the corner he goes with Salvador. Nice job getting the puck to Savard who hits the back of the net. Calgary has taken play away from the Blues now. Blues lead it two to one to center ice. Yoke and Hatch, 520 remaining. In the first period, over here to Kachuk. The puck knocked away. Mayers in front for Kachuk. And Brathwaite makes the save. So we'll have a face-off in the Calgary zone. First period of play. The Blues lead it two to one. Get an assist on the goal, but he did all the work. You see him in the corner. He's going to spot Alveline coming in from the point. And this is what caused this goal here as he made the pass. And then he went to the front of the net and tried to get some rebounds. Burry came in late, was able to scoop it to the empty net. So he didn't figure on the score sheet, but he did all the work in the corner to cause the goal. Burry scores after Kachuk and Stillman. Give the Blues a two to nothing lead. Weimer can't handle the puck. Hill leaves it at center ice. So the Blues up by a goal. We're down to five minutes to go in the first period. This is Clark Wilm. Slowed up. Puck batted away. Hesht into the corner. Now the puck back in the corner again, and it's Hesht again. Drake knocks the puck down. Regeer is shot. Blocked by Hill. Ahead to Keith Kachuk with Drake and Hesht. To Drake. He'll shoot. Blocked by Wilm. Here's Finley. Behind the net for Keith Kachuk. The pass for Hesh. Hesh in front of shot. Stick save. Brathwaite. And the puck sent down the ice by Jason Weimer. Back to touch it. Jeff Finley. Icing is the call against the Calgary Flames. Well, we mentioned, Bernie, that the Blues lost in overtime two weeks ago tonight right here. Same predicament. The Blues took the lead here 2-1 on that shorthanded effort by Scotty Young, but it was Tony Lippman sneaking in to tie this at two. We went to overtime, and a perfect pass to Mark Savard on the breakaway with the goal here that beat Roman Turk. So let's hope that 2-1 lead holds up tonight, Kenny. We don't get that same situation as two weeks ago. Be nice to get the sure two points. The Blues only one win in their last eight games, only three victories in their last 14. But if you look at it another way and you go back to that game here two weeks ago tonight, they got a point with the overtime. Yep. And in the last seven games, the Blues have points in five of the seven games. So they're still scrambling without Demetra generally, without Nash, without McKinnis, without Frogger to get some points here and there. Akins for Albaline, Chris Clark, Petrovicki, and Conroy on the ice for Calgary. There's Conroy to Clark. Back is Reardon. Chris Clark has played well against the Blues. Still battling Reardon to keep the puck. Cycles it to Conroy. He feeds behind the net to Ronald Petrovicki. In front for Conroy. He's taken down. There'll be a penalty here. It'll be on Bryce Salvador for sending Craig Conroy to the ice. You talked about Craig Conroy having the extra adrenaline. No question about it tonight. He's been all over. He's been used a lot. And good work by this line out there for the Flames. Craig Conroy trying to take the return pass in front of the net from Petrovicki. And the little push from behind the little cross check by Salvador. So that's why he goes off. But you'll see here the pass. There's Conroy right in the middle. There's the cross check. And Conroy goes sliding into the end boards. And Salvador goes into the penalty box. The Flames on their second power play of the night. Had five shots, obviously four before they scored on their first power play. So five of their seven shots on goal came on that power play. 16-12, the time of the cross-checking penalty to Salvador. Gusarov shoots the puck the length of the ice. He's on defense with Havanoff. Up front, Hesht and Eastwood. Housley has the puck hit the side of the net. Derek Morris picks it up. Morris still only 22, shoots the puck in. Far side for Valerie Burry with a Ginla and Savard. Gusarov loses the puck. Savard has it. This is Burry who has the power play goal for Calgary. To Housley in front. A Ginla over here and a shot turned away. Savard was really hampered by a quick reaction from Havanoff. Rathwaite advancing the puck to Housley. He's going to circle a little bit. Almost loses the puck to Young. And still has it. Housley backhands the puck in. Havanoff and again after it. Havanoff ahead for Drake, who's tied up by Savard, who slaps the puck to Jerome Aginla. Housley has moved up from the point. He'll play a lot like a forward on the power play. 
Some would say he probably should have been a forward all along. What a save. What a save on a Ginla by Turek. And Roman fortunate that one tripled wide. Here's a Ginla again. 44 seconds to go in the power play. Morris, good leg save. Throwing out that right pad, Bernie. Two big saves by Roman Turek. The shot by Ginla, especially right through him with good position. And there, great leg save. 217 left in the second. Lidman stopped. Finley clears the puck away. 23 seconds left in the penalty to Salvador. The Blues lead it here at the Saddle Dome in Calgary, 2 to 1. Albaline, who came up originally with New Jersey, blasts the puck in. Knocking it down, Weimer. Chances there, and the Blues get the puck. Jokin Hesch finds an opening. And Salvador just about ready to come back on. Both teams are changing. Lidman for Calgary to Chance. Salvador back on to Weimer. In front for Sutter, batted away. And the puck cleared ahead for Salvador. He'll shoot it in. Reasoner trying to get through to the puck. Shut down by Lidman, and here's Albaline. Blues lead two to one. A minute and a half remaining in the first period. This is game three of the three-game road trip. Blues lost in Philadelphia, one in overtime in Minnesota, wrapping it up here in Alberta. Lidman sends the puck in, Sutter into the corner with Barteshko, who takes his man, Petrovicki, loses the puck to Barteshko, to Reasoner, back to Barteshko. Nice move, ahead now to Havanoff, in over the line, Havanoff to Mellonby, passing it in front, good defensive play by Regeer. Mellonby battles on, here's Barteshko, Lubos Barteshko. Cycles the puck back behind the net. Reasoner trying to move in front. Forced to the back of the net. Ends up on the goal along with a puck and 51.8 seconds to go in the period. Folks, Thurgood takes Muriel's glory after she stops a burglary attempt. Will his courage be put to the test or will he be the unsung hero? Find out on an all-new PJs tomorrow night at 6 on WB11. Ken Wilson, Bernie Federko in Calgary. Boy, the season winding down. Home next Tuesday night, the Islanders. Big game Thursday night with Colorado. Next Saturday afternoon, a matinee at Savage Center with Chicago. And then a week from tomorrow night, a big game in Dallas, which precedes a game in Detroit. Talking of big, Salvador flips the puck in the slot. Weimer knocks it down. Jason Weimer. Flips the puck in the air over the head of Salvador. He beat Chance to the puck. Chance takes Salvador out. The pass for Kachuk too far, and here's Morris back. 28 seconds to go in the first period. Morris a pass for Clark Wilm. Over the right wing for Jason Weimer. He shoots the puck in. The flames are changing. 20 seconds to go in the period. Reardon for the Blues, the Chicago native. Up to Kachuk, 13 on the clock. The Kachuk to Stillman, can't get a good shot away, nine seconds. Here's Turgeon with Kachuk and Stillman. Akins takes Turgeon down, three seconds. Stillman, two seconds, in front, Reardon! Great save, Bradway! Good move by Todd Reardon, why not? Calgary's not gonna get the puck and move down the ice, and he almost scores. So that's the end of the first period, and the Blues lead it two to one. Blues hockey is brought to you by Buddy, and both teams are at full strength. Stillman and Young with Terja Hill on defense, along with Finley. Blues send the puck in. Regeer gets it ahead to Derek Morris. Petrovicki, Conroy, and Clark up front. Here's Sean Hill, just chips the puck out. It skips by Regeer. Terja moving in on Morris. Comes around, feeds it, brought on a great save! by Brathwaite, robbing Scott Young. What a save by little Freddie Brathwaite. Scott Young doesn't miss many of those, but great speed by Pierre Turgeon. Regeer let this puck go over his stick as it was cleared in, and it was the great speed of Turgeon that set it up going behind the net, and it's hard to believe that Scott Young did not score here, but look at the nice pass in front. Young all by himself tried to go high over the glove there. Brathwaite, great anticipation, came across and made the big save. A bit by Young for his 38th of the season. Finley keeps the puck in. It's Turgeon again to Stillman, and a shot blocked by Conroy. Turgeon in the corner for Scott Young. Trying to protect the puck. Getting bumped by Regeer. Bumps him back. Now Stillman a pass off Chris Clark. 
to center ice. Hill to Finley. It's the first minute of the second period. Terja gets the puck in. Conroy clears it out. And here's Jeff Finley. Now the Blues are ready to change to Drake. He'll backhand it in. Calgary changing also. One minute gone in the period. Long pass knocked down by Drake. Man in front. And the puck just out of Kachuk's reach. Regeer whacks it down the ice. Right to Roman Turek. Up to Bryce Salvador. Calgary changing to Kachuk. He'll get the puck in. Brathwaite settles it down for Dallas Akins, who's harassed by Jokin Hesch. It's Hesch centering Drake and Kachuk. Pinching in is Salvador. Alveline sends the puck back for Akins. Up the boards. And the puck by Weimer. It'll go the length of the ice. Salvador will touch it. A whistle icing the call against Calgary. Corey Stillman getting a goal for the Blues tonight as they lose it 2-1. to We asked him before the game. Difficult coming back to Calgary so soon after the deal? Definitely is. Uh, people wait sometimes three, four months to play against their old team. And for me, it comes in three games. So uh, I think it might be the best thing. Get in, get it over with, and then move on. Corey Stillman. Looks like he's going to be, Bernie, a terrific, terrific addition. Good goal tonight. He had a great scoring opportunity in the first period. He had one in this early part of the second period. Craig Conroy with the block shot there, but he was by himself in front. So, yes, he's going to be a good acquisition. Talented young man when you're six pick overall in a draft, and that's where he was back in 1992. You know he's got some skill. Yeah, he's not an afterthought, that's for sure. Mellonby gets hit. Avanoff with a puck to Gusarov. You're watching the Blues from Calgary on KPLR TV, WB11, St. Louis. Brathway hits Mellonby with a puck to Reisner. In front, what a move. And at the last moment, Bartesco Popchek hits Jerome Aginla with Valerie Burrett. Good job defensively by Havanoff. And here's Mellonby stripped to the puck by Burrett. To the point, Lindman! And oh, that shot goes just wide. Housley into the corner for Mark Savard. Cycling the puck on the boards. Burrett, nowhere to go, runs out of real estate. Housley likes to get in the play. Now Mellonby intercepts to young Marty Reisner. He'll flip the puck out. Tony Lidman from the checkered red line, blasts it right back in. Here's Gusarov up the left wing. Barteczko ends up with a puck, feeds it over off the boards. But Reardon runs into Saprikin, the 20-year-old from Russia. Stopped. Mayers loses the puck. Housley whips it off the board. Blues intercept. And a shot tipped away. Eastwood out there with Simpson and Mayers. Blues at the defense. Finley up the middle. Here's Mike Eastwood into the Calgary end. Flips the puck near the net. Brathway up to Hay. Now to Saprikin too far, and it's Jeff Finley. He'll go over to Mayers. He was actually passing the puck to Eastwood. Now they get it up to Simpson. Off the boards for Eastwood, intercepted. Owsley has it batted away. Lidman in the corner. Around far side, Mayers there, runs into Dwayne Hay. And Conroy, the ex-Blues center with a puck. To Saprikin, back for Conroy, broken up. Owsley for Calgary, shoots it in. Both teams are changing. 345 played in a scoreless second. Hill with a punt for the Blues. Up the boards and out of the reach of his teammates. The Blues up two to one. Dallas Akins fires the puck over the glass and into the crowd. Our Bud Light, what's on tap? We mentioned the Blues heading home. Tuesday night, they'll entertain the Islanders. Pairs available at 70. Colorado in Thursday night, single seats only. Saturday afternoon, awake from today, the Blackhawks, single seats only. Then on the road, home with Carolina on the third. That's a Tuesday. Pairs available. Columbus on the fifth. Pairs available. And the Blues rounded out on a Saturday night, the seventh at home. And then, ladies and gentlemen, it's the Stanley Cup playoffs, and the Blues are in again. Yes, they are. 22nd, I believe, straight year, Kenny, is it not? It's been a while since they have not been in the playoffs. I was there. <laughs> you were there. 1978-79 was, was the last, the last time. time, right? At center ice, Petrovicki slides the puck in. Reared and back, blasts it off Albaline. At center ice, the Blues playoff consistency is impressive. Petrovicki in front. 
And Conroy tips the puck wide. They're on with Chris Clark. Ronald Petrovicki knocked down. Conroy back to the point. We're going to get a penalty here against the Blues. Brathway to the bench. Stillman touches the puck. And the Blues, who lead it two to one, are going to be shorthanded. It's going to be a holding penalty here to Jeff Finley. Or is it Salvador? It's Salvador. Bryce Salvador going off. So the Flames will get their third opportunity on the power play. The Flames one for two. But good movement by the Flames in front. Good scoring opportunity by Craig Conroy. But you'll see right there behind the net, Salvador pulling down his man just before Conroy was able to pick that up. So Salvador's in the box. Joe Penville's Blues are shorthanded once again. The shots are 11-9 Blues. Calgary has seven of their nine shots on the two power plays. Five shots on the first power play when they scored. Do I have to tell you two shots on the second? I guess that's a little redundant. Not much math would tell you that. Here's Savard. Calgary looking to tie it. Housley a shot right over the net. Bure, Savard, and getting left front. Morris at the right point. Housley at the left point. Gusarov steals the puck and shoots it out by Morris. The Blues lead it two to one. So Salvador going off at 434. The Blues, you're right, have been in the playoffs every season since 79. They missed in 78 and 79. Haven't missed the playoffs since. Turek trying to clear, does get it over the line. Whack back in offside by Phil Housley. Roman Turek just took this into his own hands, firing up the middle. And you can just see it's going to be Phil Housley coming right into the picture there, but that puck had broken the plane of the blue line. That's why the whistle went for the offside. You see it again, Roman Turk here with the clear, and Housley there, a nice job batting it in. Baseball season's not that far away. Pretty good bunt. Got it down good, Kenny, right down the left, the uh, third base line. Got the good hand-eye coordination. Looking at the playoffs, the last five playoff seasons, the Blues have gone to the second round twice. Eliminated in the first round, the two other years. Looking to make it the third, fourth round, hopefully. Here's Albaline, a shot and a save. The rebound, Blues control. Young takes the puck from Gusarov and shoots it down the ice. And the Blues send out four fresh penalty killers. 56 seconds to go in the Salvador penalty. The Blues are up two to one. Here's Burray. He scored the power play goal earlier for the Flames. Back for Albaline. Now to Burray. Savard's in the corner. He'll take the pass. Not sure where he was passing. Maybe to the left point. Nobody there. And six minutes have gone by in a scoreless second. Both clubs are changing here at the Saddle Dome. 28 seconds to go in the power play for Calgary. Albaline shovels the puck off to Housley. Housley into the offensive zone. Loses the puck, recovers. Finley in the way. 12 seconds left in the penalty. Here's Jeff Chance to Phil Housley trying to center. Good job by Finley. Now Conroy to Chance to Weimer. Conroy's in front. They go to the point to Morris. The penalty's over. The shot blocked by Hill trying to get the puck. He can't. Conroy for Calgary. The Blues back at full strength. Now Young with a puck to Drake. Blues lead it two to one. And the play broken up. Morris ahead. Chance lets the puck go. Weimer and Finley after it. Could be icing. It isn't. Weimer touches the puck. Reasoner takes out Ron Sutter. Doesn't contain him, however. And then Kachuk covers up. Keith Kachuk, who has a goal, a pass too far. Then Reasoner intercepts the pass by Regeer. It now be a shot, and it deflects to the goal. Brathwaite makes the save. So there's a break in the action. We're in the second period in Calgary, and the Blues lead. Here's just a harmless play, but look at how he goes to the net. You can't move him. He's going to knock down a couple of players, and that's something the Blues haven't had, really, since Brendan Shanahan was with the Blues. Now you have Kachuk. You also have Mellonby that like to go to the front of the net. When playoff time comes around, those are the type of guys you need in front of the net, and that should make the Blues go, hopefully, Kenny, a long way in the playoffs. And Dallas Drake, who doesn't mind mucking around out there also. You've got three veterans who can get that aspect of the game done. Burray. As the puck swept away, Gusarov into the corner for Havanoff. Back for Alexei Gusarov. 
obtained not long ago from the Rangers. Good shot, unable to get the puck out. Morris keeps it in. The Blues lead it two to one. Here's Mellenby, can't make the play. Regeer to Burrett. With Savard and Aginla, shot blocked in front by Havanoff. Ahead here to Mellenby. Now to Kachuk, poke check by Morris. And the play is offside. We're just shy of the eight minute mark here in the second. Hey, you want to play in the Blues Alumni Bash? The Blues alums play the Blackhawks alums coming up this Friday at Savas Center. And if you'd like to skate with your Blues or Blackhawks heroes, and I hope they're Blues heroes, fax your name, phone number, and bid by the 21st to 314-622-2582. The two fans submitting the high bids for each team will suit up and play that night. Boy, that'll be fun. And if you'd rather just watch from the stands, tickets are only $10 and $15 available at all Ticketmaster outlets. That'll be this Friday night. I am looking forward to that game. And don't be worried about being in real good shape when you fax your bidding. We're not in that great a shape, Kenny. And I'm sure the Blackhawks are worse. Now we've got a fight, Salvador, along with Petrovicki. Interesting fight. Ronald Petrovicki, a young Slovakian, along with Bryce Salvador, who's just a first-year defenseman. Salvador has proven he can skate. He can pass the puck. Good, physical, strong in his own end. He's gotten better and better all season, and he doesn't mind fighting if he has to. No, he doesn't. He's been a very good acquisition, and he's really earned his stripes, played very well, and he's had a great start with Al McInnes, but even with Al McInnes out, he's done a great solid job, but you'll see the collision in the corner right there behind the net there, and they just kind of muck it up, push each other, and this is what it led to. Salvador with the first body slam, and they get back up, and then Petrovicki pulled Salvador up here. They exchanged a few punches. I don't think anything landed, Kenny, but it was the final slam was when Petrovicki took Salvador and put him down. So they'll be get major penalties, but I don't think any damage was done here at all. So they'll go off and we'll have a face off. Chance and Hesht. 8.06 gone. Neither team has scored here in the second. The Blues with goals from Kachuk and Stillman in the first period. Stillman on a power play. Burray answered with a power play goal. By the way, on the Burray goal, they had given the assist to Aginla and Albaline. Now they give the assist to Aginla and Conroy. Here's Hash centering by Kachuk from the point. Finley behind the net for Keith Kachuk. Morris gives him a bump, knocks him down, and Jeff Chance takes over. Buck to flex off the glass. And back into the blue zone to Jokin Hest. Hest gives the puck up. Morris feeds it ahead. Hest intercepts. Here's Kachuk with Drake. Drake a shot. Oh, what a save by Brathway. Nice little play by Kachuk setting up Dallas Drake. And Brathway comes out to make a dramatic stop. Ready Brathway a little unorthodox, but good movement here. A two on one. Kachuk. And his buddy Drake there, Drake fighting through this check from Morris. A little pass here. Drake gets good wood. You see the glove there of Freddie Brathwaite as he was sliding from his left to right. He's able to get it in. But you see the strength here of Keith Kachuk here on the ISO. He is so good, so strong. Nice little pass here. And here's the shot. Big save there by Freddie Brathwaite to keep this a one-goal game. This Calgary team struggling. They've gone winless in their last six five losses and a tie and they have only two wins in their last 12 games while the Blues have only three wins in their last 14. Of course one of those wins for Calgary the two in their last 12 was two weeks ago tonight here in overtime over the Blues. This is Ron Sutter over skating the puck then Sutter gets it back kicks it out and it's Sasha Havanov over to Sergei Gusarov. And a pass cross ice. Mares off the boards to Simpson. Can't shoot it in. Here's Dwayne Hay off the skate of Oleg Saprikin. Then Eastwood shoots the puck in. Here's Brathway, who's not very big, losing the puck to Mares. Mares goes down. So does Simpson. Saprikin, a long pass too far. Havanoff has to wait a while. Blues finally clear the zone. Lose the puck. Saprikin gloves it down. 
Moves around one man. There'll be a penalty as Saprikin goes down. And the Blues touch the puck. And they're going to find themselves shorthanded as they take a tripping penalty. Nice little move by Saprikin. Young kid with a lot of skill. Trying to make a move through the defense and he gets tripped as he went through by Reed Simpson. So Simpson's going to go by. But look at this nice little move here. See Simpson coming across. He just stepped by. You see Simpson got his stick right into that right leg of Sabrikin, pulled him down. A nice move there by Sabrikin to get through the hole. So the Blues find themselves shorthanded once again. Well, the Blues leading it two to one. The Flames looking to tie it one for three on the power play. We got a second here. We want to congratulate Elaine and Jim Woodcock, the Blues senior vice president. They had a baby girl, Julia Margaret, yesterday, seven pounds, 12 ounces. Way to go, Woody. Congratulations to the Woodcocks. Seven pounds, 12 ounces. Good size to start from. Yes. So the Blues here, shorthanded. Simpson going off at 9.38 for tripping. Again, the Flames, as you saw, one for three in the power play. They get the puck in. Savard to Ginland, Burry up front. Gusarov gets his stick held a bit. Hest has uh, lost his stick. Morris is at the near point. They come back to him. Albaline has moved in front of the net. Now a shot, and Turek makes the save and deflects the puck over the crossbar, the glass, and into the crowd. Big save by Roman Turek. The Flames did a good job setting this up. Hash with no stick. Good movement. You see Hash right there with no stick. And the pass cross ice. There's traffic in front. Good save by Roman Turek deflecting that up over top of the glass. Here's a better look from the overhead. You'll see him deflect this shot up and then over top of the glass. So big save by Roman Turek. Very solid tonight. Very solid. Getting ready for the playoffs. A minute 28 to go in the Flames man advantage. They trail the Blues two to one here in the second period. Sasha Havanoff firing the puck the length of the ice on with Gusarov. Young's up front along with Stillman killing the penalty. The shots overall are 12-11 now. Favoring the Blues. Valerie Burre out of the reach of Savard. Stillman clears the puck out and here's Derek Morris back. Blues are changing. Again, look. Savard, the shot, the save. And the rebound again let's shoots wide. Turek was fortunate that he was able to poke it a bit as the Blues clear the puck out. Housley back. Both teams are changing. It's Eastwood along with Hest, Gusarov, and Hill killing the penalty. Mark Savard having a big season. It's offside and an interference call. Hill taken down, so there's an interference penalty against Calgary. And for 41 seconds, Bernie, both clubs are going to be a man short. This is not a good penalty for Weimer to take. You know the defenseman is coming back there. When you're coming across the line, you've got to avoid the defenseman, but you'll see Weimer coming right there. He's going to see just cross up with Sean Hill, and you can't do that. And so Weimer goes off for interference, and the Blues and the Flames will play four side for 41 seconds, and the Blues will just be on their second power play tonight. Craig Gilbert. The new head coach here hoping he can get a little spark under this team and their remaining games. See what happens once the season ends. Calgary 12th in the Western Conference. 30 points behind the Blues. Finley four on four. Mariesner too far for Reardon and Brathwaite will fall on the puck and hold it for a whistle. The Blues will get a face off in the Calgary zone. Both teams shorthanded. 845, 844 left in the second. The Blues up by a goal. Kachuk, who was the last Blues player to wear number seven prior to Keith Kachuk. We know Nelson Emerson has worn it. Gary Unger wore it. Red Berenson wore it. There have actually been more Blues players who have worn number seven than you might think, but we want to know the last one. At the point, the shot right on by Havanoff. Good save, Brathwaite. Both teams shorthanded for 12 seconds. Then the Blues will have a power play. Conroy goes down. Buck glove to the boards by Reardon. Again, trying to move in front. Can't. Regeer keeps the puck in and hits Corey Stillman. 
Four on four. Now the Blues get their man back. Simpson over to the far side. Young in the shot off chance high over the glass and into the crowd. Let's answer our Dobbs trivia question. You think you know who was the last Blues player before Keith Kachuk to wear number seven? I, I, and it was oh, Rico. Carperson. That's yeah. right. I remember now. Absolutely. I'll be able to forget that 10 years from now also. Rico back playing in Ottawa. So and the player before Ricard Pearson who wore number seven was the man coaching Calgary Greg Gilbert. Greg Gilbert really OK. And the man before that didn't even have a full cup of coffee with the Blues just had a swig took a sip and he was gone. Who's that. Alexei Kasatonov. Oh that was a sip. Oh man. That was a real that was a short sip. Just a few games. The coffee must off. have been really hot. Yeah. Burned his lip and didn't take anymore. <laughs> Hit the trail. Wow, I would. I was even thinking that Nelson Emerson was that. Was yeah. I off? Emerson was uh, followed by Kasatonov, Gilbert, and Pearson, and now Kachuk. Puck goes down the ice. Less than a minute to go, and the Blues man advantage. Kind of an interesting group that have worn number seven. Of course, Joe Mullen wore number seven. Always, I always go to Unger and. Berenson first. Yep. For some reason, I forget Joey, but very prominent player who wore number seven for the Blues. Terja right wing for Hesh. Kachuk with them on the power play. Blues here in the second period, leading two to one. Terja in front to Hesh. Brathwaite standing up, makes a nice save. Trying to move in, stop the puck. Young, he can't. Ron Sutter gets it out, and here's Havanaugh. Flipping the puck ahead for Turgeon. Nice move to Jochen Hest. Hest, bad angle, a shot. And closing his pads together, Brathwaite to make the save. 11 seconds to go in the Blues power play. Now, Kenny, we were supposed to get this little hint here. And you know what? You and I are reading so fast. Now, look at how they spelt. Uh, huh? Look at that. Now, we're supposed to get that. But you know what? No, Bernie. Bernie, I just thought that they just made another mistake. But wait a second. Our fine producer, Tim Paps, and our fine director, oh, oh, oh. Tom McLaughlin, failed to know that Mike Van Ryan, who was up earlier this right, season, he wore, seven. he wore number seven. Now, wouldn't he be the last guy? Yeah, he's the last one. Well, player. now, you know what? Mike Caruso just came down yeah. with that for us. And yeah, it's Mike nice Van to Ryan. see that Mike is watching the game, first of all. You see, now in the truck, they try to get cute with us and give us the hint <laughs> for the wrong answer. You know, then I give him a jab, just another mistake, and then we get jabbed again. <laughs> you know, when it goes bad, it, it, you know, it just keeps going. Whoa, and a shot by Stillman Y. Three seconds to go in the power play. Here's Barteshko. Now Stillman. The truck's trying to argue. Only played one game. <laughs> Last I heard, they all counted. One game or 1,000. It's still a career, <laughs> and you're still wearing seven. Lidman, Ron Sutter, and the Blues Hill takes over. Pinching in is Housley. Blues lead 2-1. Less than seven minutes remaining in the second period. Both teams at full strength. The Blues able to get the puck out. Housley will skate back for it. That's one thing he can do. Now the puck hits Hill at center ice. Goes over here to Aginla. Burray goes to the net. Then Savard comes in front of the net. Here's Aginla. The pass, and Housley deflects the puck wide. Good defensive play by Havanoff on Savard's centering effort as Havanoff clears the puck out. 6.15 remaining in a scoreless second period. Mark Savard shoots the puck in as the team's complete a change. Here's Havanoff, 29-year-old in his first NHL season. Albeline goes back. Havanoff has never played a long season like this. Savard ahead, but Burray is offside. 5.56 in the clock. Second period at the Saddle Dome. 2 on Blues. They come in from the side of your screen there with the deflection. Good work there to make sure he got hooked, but it was a nice play all around. As a good play by Aginla. There's Sasha Havanaugh sporting that nice shiner. Tough game. Not for the faint of heart. Offside are the Flames. While we have a moment, let's bring you up to date on Nikki. 
You know, folks, Nikki's television debut turns to embarrassment when she and Dwight realize that she's become must-see TV with bar patrons. Are they toasting to the warm weather, or is it her backside? Oh, baby. It's Bottoms Up on Nikki tomorrow night at 8 on WB11. And we're at home for that, Kenny. We're sounds, not on the road. Sounds like she's in places that you and I would never frequent. That's right. Tuesday night, you'll have to fill me in on exactly what happened. Yeah, I'll be watching. I was curious to see how many games Alexei Kasatonov played with the Blues wearing number seven. He played very late in the 93-94 season, played eight games. Blues set it up, shot deflected wide. Reardon letting it go. He and Salvador on defense. Then Wilm gets the puck ahead to Weimer. Weimer having a bit of a problem getting out. Can't. Drake to Kachuk. Stop. Drake with a puck to the point. Reardon over here to Salvador. He'll shoot wide. Back for Reardon. He'll shoot wide. And the Blues are changing. 520 to go in the second. They lead it 2 to 1. Back for the puck. Reardon. Can't clear. Weimer a shot. Oh, and that hits Hill's stick and goes into the crowd. That was a close call. Couple of giveaways at both ends. And here this one right along the boards. Weimer just coming late with a quick shot there. It was deflected up over top of the glass. At the other end was the same thing. Weimer should have had the puck out along the zone, and Greg Gilbert was not happy with Weimer along the boards. He took the puck back into the zone. The Blues with three shots. All of them went wide, but you don't ever bring the puck back into your own zone when you've got it up six feet from the board, from the blue line. Get it out. First player to wear number seven with the Blues, Fred Barons. Yes. Then Gary Unger, then the legendary Red Lawrence, then Joe Mullen, Cliff Ronnie, Dan Quinn, Nelson Emerson, Alexei Kasatonov, Greg Gilbert, Ricard Pearson, Mike Van Ryan. Every, every school child knows that Mike Van Ryan wore number seven, and now Keith Kachuk. And I get a feeling that Keith Kachuk may wear it for a number of years. Yeah. And the Blues are offside at the Calgary line. People ask me if I if I know all the numbers. You know, I really don't know numbers very well. You know, if you ask me an hour after the game, tell me numbers. I mean, I know them somehow, but I could never recite them usually. Is that why you don't go to Vegas? You don't know numbers no, very, not, very I'm good? I'm not good at remembering numbers. <laughs> not good numbers. Like, I can remember that you wore 24. But, I, you know, at home, I have to look up the ceiling to see the banner to be sure. I would have had, I, I would, well, I, I remember Red Lawrence wearing seven. Of course, Joey wore seven for a long time with us. Uh, but Casatona, that was not in my memory bank. Yeah, there are a lot of things that uh, one could forget. Buck deflects him, so there's no icing. Turek plays it. Up to Young, into the middle of Finley. Out of the reach of Stillman. He touches the puck, however, and here's Albaline back for Calgary to Chris Clark. Clark, the Clarkson University product. Ahead for Conroy, who flips the puck in. Hill gets in the way of Petrovicki, then runs him into the boards. Petrovicki flips the puck in front, but the Blues have it. Corey Stillman's pass does not connect with a stick of Young. Aiken's pass ahead for Petrovicki. Nice move around Stillman, a shot. Stick save, turn. Finley ahead for Corey Stillman. Blues lead it two to one. Neither team has scored in the second with 413 remaining. This is Ron Sutter, who also, of course, played with the Blues. Wore number 12, did he not? He wore number 12 with the Blues? Yes, he did. he did, right? Yep. Now the battle along the boards. They hold the puck there with 401 remaining in the second. Play is stopped. Well, we hope you'll join the Blues in Office Depot in raising money for Cardinal Glennon Children's Hospital. Go to stlouisblues.com and look for the goals for Glennon logo. There you can adopt a player and pledge dollars for each of his goals or goaltending wins through the regular season. All proceeds benefit the emergency room at Cardinal Glennon. And everyone who pledges will be entered in a sweepstakes for two tickets to all Blues home playoff games this spring. Ron Sutter wore 22, not 12. Did he? 22? And Richie was 23. Really? We're getting all this kind of information, and I don't know it. This must be a heck of a game we're watching to be able to talk about all this. At center ice, Regeer has trouble with a puck. Eastwood slides it into the corner. 22, huh? See, I told you I, I don't really remember numbers. Ron Flockhart wore number 12. Well, that's true. Lockie Hockey. 
Lindman slowed up. Blues get the puck. Simpson shoots it out. We might have to take some calls from our listeners. Here is Gusarov leaving the puck for Simpson. Stolen. Moving in Savard. In alone. Fake shoots off the side of the post. Murray overskates the puck. Savard kept wiggling those shoulders, but I don't know. Did it hit the side of the post? Side of, yeah, yeah, side of the post, but you know what? He quit, he quit skating. Yeah. He was in all by himself and slowed right down, and why he did that is beyond me. He had great speed going through the middle, and... You'll see it here, a good move. Now watch how he's just stopped skating, just slows right down, and now with the move, hold it, and then he tried to go, but he got a piece of it. Roman Turk's shoulder and then hit the post, but this is the Commerce Bank big save of the night. As you see the shoulder there, the arm hit the puck and then off the post, so big save again by Roman Turk. Had a boat, score 12. Yeah, last Blues player to wear 12. You got no chance in the world. No chance in the world. How long ago? Beginning of last season or maybe the other season? Season or two, it was, I think it was beginning of last season. But you know, Bernie, they start to roll together a little bit. The season's in front, and Will can't get a shot taken care of by Salvador. Hatched up the boards, not out, Albaline. Shot blocked in front, good play by Reardon. Ladislav Nagy. You forgot about this oh, season. That's right. Well, I'm, I, this is all before this season. Come on. <laughs> Only if it's the truck do we count this season. If it's us up here, we don't count this season. Derek King wore 12 before Nagy. There's a lot more eyes in the truck than there is up here, Kenny. We don't have a chance at competing now. I know. They've got a big staff down there, and they get into the Blues Encyclopedia. We're up here trying to do a hockey game with no help whatsoever. Here's Kachuk to Reisner, a shot wrap, wait the save, and he's looking for the puck and able to reach out and smother it with two minutes, seven seconds to go in the second period. This is a nice spot for Marty Reisner to be in between a couple of big books like Mellonby and Kachuk, and you see the pass to right there, the shot from Reisner, Mellonby in front, Good save by Brathwaite. He couldn't find it for a second, but he finally was able to get his hand on it as both Reisner and Kachuk are zeroing in. But look at Melby right in front, fighting for position. You can see Brathwaite trying to reach for the puck. Finally, he gets it as Kachuk just pushes it forward, but Brathwaite with a good save there. You get that big mitt down on it. Here we go, Lidman. 2-1, Blues lead. Blues have Reisner, Mellonby, and Barteshko out there with Gusarov and Havanoff. And Savard moves in with a Ginla and Burry. Gusarov knocks the puck away, can't get the puck. Savard trying to center Barteshko in the way and able to clear the puck out. The Blues are out shooting the Flames, 17-15. They lead it 2-1, all the scoring in the first period. Mellonby bumped by Lidman. Reisner hit hard along the boards. Then it's Mellonby taken out. Lidman has lost his stick. Regeer there on Mellonby. Regeer, a big boy. Mellonby a battler. Reisner centering for Bartesco. And the puck batted into the crowd in back of the Blues bench. And Mellonby and Regeer going to do a little bear hugging here. And it doesn't look like it'll be anything more than that. Well, we mentioned all the scoring in the first period. Our Ford goal recap. Blues got the first goal, an even strength goal. Kachuk scored it. His 30th, and that was very early in the game at 224. Then Stillman is 22nd, a power play goal at 914 of the opening period. Then Valerie Burry scored his 24th in a power play at 1210. Again, all of the scoring in the first period, and that is our Ford goal recap. All right, Bernie, starting with jersey numbers, sweater numbers, one, two, three, on up. Which is the uh, lowest number that's never been used by the Blues? There you go. Well, it's probably a very unusual number, like 77 or 99. Gretzky, one well, guy. 77, and I'm talking about if you start at one, two, three, and you go on up. 13 was used once. 
which is the first number that's never been used. That's uh, also the lowest number never used. Oh, okay. Petrovicki. Questions harder than the answer. And it's never been used or just used once? Never been used. Wow. Um, Here's Terjan. 54 seconds to go in the period. Behind the net, Stillman with Young and Terjan. Having off and Goose are off at the points. Terjan. He's got Young in front. The puck to Young. Sends it into the crease. Albeline trying to make sure Brathwaite has it, and he does. And that stops play, and the Blues come very close there to making it 3-1. to one. Brathwaite, Stone, Scott Young again. Good move by Turgeon. Another nice dump pass to the front of the net. And Young here wasn't able to get it until it was beyond the net. He's able to chip it by, but Albeline in a good position there. You see Scott Young, there's the save. And this puck goes by, and it was Albeline that saves it and just throws it underneath Brett Brathwaite. Look at those numbers for Scott Young. What a season he is having. 37 goals. Lowest number never used by the Blues. 45. Believe it or not. Really? They've had players wear 40, 41, 42, 43. Of course, 44. Who wore 42? The legendary Rory Fitzpatrick. Okay. Jeff Batters and Libor Zabransky wore 43. And there were actually four players who wore 44 before Chris Pronger. I'm going to predict that he'll probably be the last I would, to wear 44. I would for guess the Blues. that. I think he's got a chance to have a pretty good career. Here's a shot. Brathwaite the save. Kachuk goes down. Has centers. There's going to be a penalty here against Calgary with 31 and a half seconds to go in the second period. That was a late call there. That should have been called right away. The arm didn't go up for a long time, but. Here's the presence of Keith Kachuk as the Blues win the faceoff. Now Kachuk goes to the front of the net. Here's the shot by Hesh, and this man is just hard to control. He was knocked down as he battled for it. There he's got knocked down. It was off to the side of the play there, though, that the call was made. It was actually not on Kachuk that the trip was called. Regeer was with the other Blues forward that was out there at the time, I believe, either Turgeon or Hesh. So Regeer goes off for tripping the Blues on their third power play of the night. So they're one for two. Four of their 19 shots have come with a man advantage. Again, they have one power play goal. The goal by Stillman is first with the Blues. He had an assist, remember, on the game winner in overtime the other night. Whoop, but gets by Young. Here is Conroy over skates the puck. 20 seconds to go in the period. Wilm to Conroy to Wilm. Tipped off Kachuk. And uh-oh, we're going to have a problem here. Turek is injured. Clark Wilm going heavily into Turek, who was hit pretty hard back in the first period. And uh, Kachuk, the first man there to say, oh, come on, be a little careful here. Yeah, Kachuk pushed him actually into the net. It was Wilm that was going to net Conroy. A nice pass back to Wilm. It was actually deflected, I believe, by Kachuk. And then as Wilm kept coming back, he pushed him into Turek, but you'll see here the puck bounce over Scott Young. Conroy with great speed, not able to corral it, but he stayed on side as Scott Young missed it there again. Now this became a two-on-one, Wilm and Conroy. Now look at the work there, and then just the push there by Kachuk of Wilm into the body of Roman Turk. There, nothing anybody could do there, but Roman Turk looks to be okay. And that's good news. So 16.4 seconds to go, second period. Blues have the man advantage. They lead 2-1. To end our saga of numbers, I mentioned four players have worn 44 before Pronger. Gordy Roberts, Mario Marawa, Brett Hedekin, and Terry Hollinger. And there will be only five that will ever wear that number. Here come the Blues, seconds remaining. In the second period, Young, nice play to Kachuk. Now to Turgeon, eight seconds. Have an off shot, stick save, five seconds. Dusserov gets the puck in front, two seconds. And that's going to do it as Conroy comes to center ice. Neither team scores in the period, but the Regeer penalty at 1928 and the Blues power play will continue into the third period. Next telecast, by the way, will be a Fox Sports Net telecast on Tuesday night from Savas Center. Blues next game against the New York Islanders. 
Blues, remember, have a power play for a minute 29 to begin the period. It would be very nice to get a goal here, Bert. Very large. This could really set the tone for the rest of the period. Here is Young with Hesh and Kachuk and Terja and Havanaugh. Hesh with the puck. Didn't pass it to Terja, carried it to him. Now Terja, he's got Kachuk right in front. To the point to Havanoff. Over to Young, and the shot goes wide. And Havanoff will have to come to center ice. The crowd, to say the least, is quiet, and the Blues get called for an offside with 50 seconds remaining in their man advantage. Let's tell you about Maxwell House Coffee Mug Night. It is Tuesday with the Islanders in town. And the first 15,000 of you with a paid admission will receive the 2001 edition of the annual Blues Coffee Mug, courtesy of Maxwell House. And you'll see the home debuts, of course, of Keith Kachuk and Corey Stillman. There are a few seats at $70 each, still available at Ticketmaster Outlets for Tuesday night's game. I need some new coffee cups, Kenny. You'll get your dozen. You think I can get that many? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to buy, buy 12 seats to do that. No, you don't. You know, you're, you could get 24, two dozen, seeing as how that was your number. I think you could have whatever you want. Bernie. Did they make 15,000 and 24? It says the first yeah. 15,000. There's always a little overrun on that okay. kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. So you won't be taking anything from anybody. Pass for Kachuk gets by him. Here's Terja trying to one-hand the puck in front. It deflects to the corner. Kachuk with half a minute to go in the power play to Young. To Kachuk. Blues up two to one. His pass tipped away by Ron Sutter. I knew Sutter wore 12. And we figured out that was with Philadelphia. Correct. That I remember Ron yeah. Sutter wearing 12. Young snapshot off Brathway. Ron Sutter gloves it down. Trying to get around Hesh Camp. Turgeon. 12 seconds of the power play to Kachuk off Morris. And the buck sails high into the crowd here at the Saddle Dome. Nice play there by Derek Morris. Just to get his stick on that as that was a good shot by Scott Young, too, coming down. The wing here, you see the pass from Turgeon Young. Great speed. Just kicked it up and then a quick, hard wrist shot. Brathwaite had no idea where it was. It hit him in the blocker. There's that graphite stick that Scott Young uses. One piece, totally graphite from blade right through. You can see it's hollow at the top there. So the shaft itself all the way to the blade. The blade is solid, obviously, but the shaft is hollow. Here's Hill, pass gets away, intercepted, Petrovicki. He's got Conroy on the far wing, Conroy after the puck. Looking to center, run of the boards by Finley. Here's Marty Reisner up to Scott Mellonby. He's got Stillman on the far side, and intercepting it's Dwayne Hay. He's slowed up, goes into the corner, runs into Mellonby, and the puck controlled by Corey Stillman. He gets a little daylight. Then loses the puck to Petrovicki. Kept in. Conroy a shot. Turek the save. And we've got a little interference there. Just a little on Jeff Finley as he interferes with Dwayne Hay. Dwayne Hay going hard to the net. A nice play by Craig Conroy to keep the puck in right at the blue line and then fire the hard wrist shot through traffic. Roman Turek had to be real sharp on the original shot, but it was Finley with the pull down here, but right here, this puck bounced. Conroy will just take the quick shot here right from the near boards. You see Turk unable to handle it right there in the middle. Finley takes down Hay, so the flames go on the power play. There was a penalty that there was no doubt about. 159, the time of the penalty. Calgary one for four on the power play. 10 of their 17 shots have come. On the power play, the Blues out shooting the Flames 21-17. And the Blues lead it 2-1. to one. They're actually above 500 on the road. Housley a shot, glove saved by Turek. He'll hold on. 15 wins, 14 losses, five ties, and two overtime losses, which I refuse to count as losses in terms of 500 or above 500, 15 and 14 with seven games that went into overtime. Right. Besides some overtime wins that are in that 15, I'm sure. Yep. Nothing's easy to explain in the NHL, but that's all right. Here's Savard. 
The good news is the Blues were early as dominating the road team as you've ever seen and with the injuries kind of leveling off but still an impressive road record anytime you've got more wins than you do I will say regulation losses that's impressive. Gusarov tips the puck by again quickly back having off the Blues are short handed they have a slim one goal lead Eastwood can't clear Savard to Burray puck gets away and Havanoff will backhand it into the penalty bench below us at a minute 18 to go in the Flames man advantage. Flames not able to get set up. Housley with the sh wasted shot just before. Havanoff with the clear there. You can't shoot the puck from the point unless you have someone in front of the net. So Gilbert has changed lines, but the Blues very aggressive penalty killing along the board. So you see. Three flames in there. Good work by Mike Eastwood along the boards. Everybody coming in to help. You see three Blues players. And then Havanov here with the steal there and just dumping it up over the glass. So good work by the Blues. I don't know why this faceoff is coming outside the blue line. It should be in the top of the circle. I, I don't know why they're saying that this is going to go outside the blue line. Maybe they're going to change it because it certainly should be back inside the zone. We're going to ask the linesman. Sure, we'll, we'll take it inside if you'd like to. That's okay. So the officials decide to take it inside. Here it is. This is where it should be cleared. So you see right there, folks. Right there. So that's where it should be in. So when we go in there, in fact, they should even have it even further back. They're going to do it right at the top of the circle. There seems to be another point of view, however. Let's, let's bring... Let's come over here and talk about it. I don't know why Joel is hot because this was cleared by Havanaugh right over the glass. It didn't hit anything. At least I didn't think it hit anything. No. Well, he's got to be arguing that it. Yeah, hit that the face off. Yeah, he's arguing that it must hit somebody and the face off should be outside the line. But he here appears again, let's to see be. Havanaugh. No, it went straight out. It didn't hit Burry. You see how they're doing it at the top of the circle, Kenny. You can see right there. That should be even further back. It should be almost at the dot. Yeah. And they've got the face out here at the top of the circle. Joel's still yelling, but he had seemed at one point to have been satisfied. He'll be satisfied if the Blues get the win. They lead 2-1, still short-handed. Sapregan leaves the puck. Lidman over to Alvaline, and that deflects just wide. Drake gets the puck. Can't quite get it out. Kept in. Tony Lidman into the corner for Conroy. Broken up. Gusarov can't get out. Saprikin can't center. A good play there by Havanoff. This is Albaline. He and Lidman on the points. Saprikin, Shantz, Conroy up front on the power play. Conroy to Shantz. Turek robs Jeff Shantz. And the Blues shoot the puck the length of the ice. Still 41 seconds to go in the Finley penalty as both teams change players. Relatively early in the third, we're the Pengrove Saddle Dome in Calgary, and the Blues have a lead. Two to one now. Savari can't make the play. Unable to clear. Puck kept in, sent to the point. Here's Savard again. 22 seconds to go in the man advantage to Albaline. Trying to move in front. Lidman can't. And the Blues able to clear the puck down the ice. Both teams changing again. Now it's Jerome McGinley. Just shy of the four minute mark in the third. Again, look quickly through center ice. Hill lines him up. Savard centers tipped away by Salvador. Regeer to Burre. The penalty is over. Blues back at full strength. Savard goes to the point. Here's Regeer's shot, and that deflects wide. And the puck stolen from Savard by Salvador. And he'll clear the puck down the ice. Robin Regeer back to touch it. Icing is the call against the Blues. Calgary moving the puck around on the power play. The Blues penalty killer is set to be sharp, but the Flames with chances, shots from the point. That's what they're trying to do. There's the deflection in front of Roman Turek. 
And then here's another play. This is a sh pass from Conroy to Chance, and a nice save again by Roman Turek, who has been very steady. And here we'll see it again from the overhead. The pass from Conroy there, Chance. That's a big save there with the, the blocker there of Roman Turk. It's Clark Wilm facing off with Pierre Turgeon. Wilm and Weimer and Chance. Regeer and Morris. Regeer's shot hits Chance in the back of the right leg. Man, is he in pain. He says, I'm thinking of going to the bench. Might even be thinking of going home. Can hardly get to the bench. And Calgary is offside. Now Chance gets to the bench and says, I better try to skate this off a little bit. And it always seems that your own defenseman hits you in the back of the leg. There's 85 feet wide the ice, and then, you know your legs are only six inches wide, and they hit you in the back of the leg. How can they do that? Oh. From eight feet away. How big a bruise will that baby oh, be? Oh boy. <laughs> How tight will that be tomorrow morning? <laughs> well, he's hoping that it's tight enough that he gets out of practice. <laughs> At the point, Finley. Reardon at the near point, he's thinking of pinching in. The puck kept in by Terja. He'll flip it to the net, scooped up on the short off by Brathwaite, and we'll have a face-off in the flame zone as they trail the Blues 2-1. Still 15-17 remaining here in the third period. Melina's claws come out when she discovers that Mel still keeps in touch with his ex-girlfriends. Don't miss guest stars Cindy Williams and Jerry Burns on an all-new For Your Love tomorrow night at 8.30 on WB11. Big night tomorrow night. PJs, Nikki, and For All Your Love. Turjan trying to fend off Conroy. Here's Young. Can't get the one-hander through. Chris Clark with a puck to Craig Conroy. Now Derek Morris, pass at center ice, tipped away by Reardon. Conroy can't get around Turgeon, and Morris goes back. The Blues out shooting the Flames, 21-19. As the teams change, Havanoff takes possession. He's out there with Alexei Gusarov. Here's Gusarov, he'll fire the puck in, depending on his man to get there first. And the Blues do a reasonable good job lifting the stick of Aikens. Barteshko there. Mellonby will go after the puck in the far corner. Chased by Savar. Hit by Savar. Leaves the puck for Barteshko. To Reisner. He shoots and fires wide. Now, Sasha Havanoff off the boards to Lubos Barteshko. He'll take a backhander. And that's knocked away. And here's Mark Savar. Long pass up the left wing to Jerome McGinley. Bure is going to come behind him and get the puck. Nice little poke check there by Reisner. Bure. Going to get hit by Reisner. That's a good hit by Reisner. That's what you got to do with the players like Bure. You got to hit him. Now Bure overskates the puck. He was looking up to see what he had to shoot at. And never got the puck. Albany. Now we're going to get a penalty near the Blues net as Bure ends up down on the ice and the Blues are going to be shorthanded. They've been in that predicament a lot. They lead however two to one. Here in Calgary two one but they're going to go on the here in Calgary two one but they're going to go on the sixth time they're going to take a shorthanded effort there. You're going to see Havanoff taking the penalty on Bure right away right here as he was hit. Now he comes back. There's the retaliation and the Blues find themselves shorthanded again. 6-19, the time of the Havanoff penalty. Calgary is one for five in the power play. Look at that, 12 shots. 12 of their 20 shots have come in the power play. Now the Blues can't clear. Housley, Morris on the points. Housley moves in front of the net. Burray to Aginla. Back to Burray, stopped by Salvador. Is on with Finley, Stillman, and Eastwood. Burray gets bumped. Aginla gets the puck. Burray with it again. To Housley, not much room. Far side, Salvador gets there. Off the glass and down the ice. Blues send out four fresh penalty killers. Good aggressive penalty killing there, and that's what you have to do. Don't let the Flames get a chance to set it up, especially back to Housley. Hasn't been a goal in this game since Burray scored on a power play at 12-10 in the first period. After Kachuk and Stillman had given the Blues a 2-0 lead. Savard. 
Can't get the shot. Valerie Bure loses the puck. And Sean Hill wheels and fires at the length of the ice. Drake's out there with Young. Goose are off and Hill. Calgary's changing. They have 46 seconds to go in their man advantage. Conroy leaves the puck. Drake steals it, gets it out. And here is Albaline to Lidman. He'll risk the puck in. Petrovicki kicks it behind the net to Conroy. His line mates, Petrovicki and Clark with him. In front, the puck comes, and Mike Eastwood gets it out to Hesh. His shot goes off Albaline's stick and into the crowd. 12.02 to go in the third. 22 seconds left in the Havanoff penalty. Let's turn now to our McDonald's game recap. Kachuk and Stillman scoring their first goals with the Blues. And there's the Blues' terrific record when they score the first goal in the game. A lot of teams, though, the, the good teams have numbers like that. And there are the shots tonight, 22-20, favoring the Blues. What's well, amazing, Kenny, the four games this year against the Flames, the Blues have been shorthanded 28 times now. The Flames only 16. Almost 2-1. to one. It's bizarre. Yet the Blues have won two of the three games, losing that last one in overtime. You sort of get that feeling, and Calgary's still on the power play here, that even though their power play is nothing special, and in fact it's been very poor this season at home, and they already have one tonight, that if you give them enough, they're going to get another power play goal. And the Blues with only two goals, well, the margin of error is not that great. Turek leaves the puck. Hill fires it the length of the ice. And Havanoff just about ready to come back on. And he is on the ice. Blues back at full strength. Calgary now one for six on the power play, while the Blues tonight are one for three. Kachuk's pass broken up by a Gimla. Here's Bure, the shot right on. Turek knocks the rebound away. Savard in the corner with Todd Reardon. Good job by Todd Reardon. And Jamal Mayers takes the puck. Off the boards to have it off. He'll clear the puck out. And Tony Lidman goes back for Calgary. Both clubs are changing. The third period approaching the nine-minute mark. Mayers gets the puck from Kachuk. Puck hits the referee. Kachuk tries to center, hits the back of the net. Reed Simpson can't get there. And Lidman lifts the puck out. It hits the linesman. Weimer moves in. Now within about 15 seconds, you hit the referee and the linesman. Now Jeff Chance gets away from Reardon to Clark. Wilm in the shot. The flex high. Here's Dallas Akins. Ahead for Weimer. Reardon intercepts, clears the puck out. Blues are changing. Akins to Regeer. He'll wind up. And a blocker save by Roman Turin. Here is Pierre Turgeon. Salvador and Reardon on defense. Stillman, Young, and Turgeon. They'll give the puck to Salvador. Turgeon, Salvador. He'll flip it in. And they're going to call an icing here as Akins touches the puck. Icing against the Blues with 10.04 remaining in the third period. The Blues up by a goal. We'll go back to Corey Stillman saying he didn't think his goal was going to be the game winner. It may be. Yeah, it <laughs> it might may be. 2-1 right now. And that goal was came a long time ago. So the Blues have done a good job checking. As you said, if it wasn't for the Flames power plays, they wouldn't be getting any shots at all. They haven't had many without the power play. Some empty seats here tonight, but uh, it was a late arriving crowd and a pretty good crowd as it turns out. They're calling it a sellout, 17,139. The capacity here used to be a lot bigger. On each side, they have some seats very high up that they have uh, taken out of circulation, if you will, covered up. St. Patrick's Day, their green seats, they wanted to show them. They kept those vacant right. purposely, Kenny. That's why some of the folks didn't show up. They wanted more green to show. But the length of the ice, Abilene touches it. An icing call against the Blues. 9.55 to go. Third period in Calgary, and the Blues are up 2-1. to one. one less than half of the third period remaining. Next three at home. Islanders Tuesday night. Avalanche Thursday night. Blackhawks next Saturday afternoon. And a big game a week from tomorrow night in Dallas against the Stars and there are not that many games left. 
A trip that begins a week from tomorrow night in Dallas goes to Detroit, Pittsburgh, and Columbus. And then home for the last three with Carolina, Columbus, and Nashville. Both teams at full strength. Here's Dallas Aikens back. His pass gets away. Hill shoots the puck in. You've got Stillman, Turgeon Young up front, Finley and Hill on defense. Aikens with a puck again for the Flames. Lose up two to one. Nine and a half minutes to go. There's no icing here. Chris Clark gets taken down, or does he take down Finley? Now Petrovicki a shot. Good pass save again by Turek. Turgeon softly flips the puck out, and Aikens controls. The Blues begin a line change. Aikens will get to the red line. He'll shoot the puck in. Far side. Jeff Shantz can't get the puck. Kachuk does. The Dallas Drake. Drake, Kachuk, and Hest. Drake and Morris in the corner. Behind the net for Kachuk. Gets away from Regeer. Drake to Hest. Back for Drake. In front for Kachuk. Tipped away. Clark Wilm. Brings the puck through center ice for Calgary. Into the corner for Jason Weimer. Hess trying to steal at the point. You've got Derek Morris. Wrist shot and chance to flex it wide. Have it off up the boards. Oh, Drake really gets slammed by Weimer as he gets the puck out. Then Drake takes the puck from Will. Drake around Morris. Shoots. And the bad angle shot turned away by Brathwaite. Now Robin Regeer gathers in the puck and comes to center ice. He'll flip it in. Turek lets the puck go to Salvador. 8-10 to go. Third period. Reasoner to center ice. Shoots it in. Blues up 2-1. to one. Brathwaite flips the puck up the boards. Knocking it down. Reasoner back to the point. Reardon a shot. And save. Rebound. Mellonby's shot fails to beat Brathwaite. And the puck to center ice. Taken by Reasoner and shot right back in again. Now Barteshko can't get through. Owsley. Here's Salvador. The puck deflects and then off Reasoner. And the Calgary player, the puck goes into the crowd. Well, Corey Stillman back home, if you will, spending his career here in Calgary. We talked to him before the game. Ask us to really ask him to tell us about the Flames situation here. It has been for this will be, I think, the fifth year. They probably won't make the playoffs. So it's been a, it's been a long season. Uh, especially when you think back to the late 80s when they had such a great team and then players slowly disappeared. But uh, it's a great hockey city. that They like the Flames. Uh, I think the biggest thing is, though, they, is they want a winning team. And right now they don't have it, and then hopefully eventually they will. Well, everybody wants a winning team. That's universal, even if you go to recent expansion cities like St. Paul, Minneapolis, you go to Columbus, you go to Atlanta. First year, let's win, let's win. Everybody wants to win, and why not? Here's Gusarov. And the Blues have had really a winning team season after season. And when you do win, then the requests get a little bit more demanding. And no one wants to win more than the players. That's the whole deal. And if you don't have the chemistry, you don't have the talent, sometimes you just can't win. And that's where Calgary is kind of stuck. And it'd be a shame to lose this franchise, Kenny. Yeah, there's talk that they might not be able to survive here. And Everybody always refers to the exchange rate between the Canadian dollar and the U.S. dollar. And talk of the Flames eventually ending up in Portland, Oregon at the Rose Garden. Here's Terja to Corey Stillman in front. And again, La breaks up the play. Only 6.50 to go in the third. The Blues have been clinging to a 2-1 lead since the 12-10 mark of the first period. And we touched on the last time we were here two weeks ago, the last playoff series that Calgary was on was had won was the Stanley Cup final in 1989. So that's a lot of hockey without winning a playoff series. That's a sorry drop off, isn't it? Wow. They're offside. Flames just, I mean, just offside at the St. Louis line with 627 showing on the clock here in the third period. Maybe we can start talking about another number, Kenny. Which number do you want to talk about now? Who's the only player to wear number 42 in Detroit? I guess it was you, huh? <laughs> Who was wearing 24? Bob Probert. I didn't, Bob want, I didn't want to fight him for the number. You didn't ask? 
Well, he was in jail, so I didn't. I <laughs> <laughs> That's why you didn't pass. <laughs> you couldn't get a day pass. There's a shot, and that stop. Hill is stopped. He gets run over. Ronald Petrovicki. <laughs> And Hill runs into him. Hill and Petrovicki. Petrovicki's been in one fight from the point. The shot by Albaline knocked down. Calgary with just over six minutes to go. Down by a goal. Here's Lidman feeding the puck ahead. Petrovicki stopped by Drake. Trying to get the puck out. Hesh can't. Kachuk gets the puck from Drake. Trying to move around Albaline. And a nice poke check by Tommy Albaline. That's a nice play. Here's Conroy from Lidman. Back to Tony Lidman. Ahead. It's Weimer around Hill. Weimer behind the net. Weimer can't center. The puck hits the side of the goal. There's Jochen Hesch hitting the referee. Boy, that's two referees and a linesman getting hit in a short period of time. Drake to Kachuk. Can't play breakout. Morris is shot and that deflects into the crowd. Kachuk down on the ice. He's shaken up, but he gets up in a hurry. Third period. 2-1. Blues. Stop and Tom Connors again. Last game of the okay. Bernie, the folks here have liked this song better than they've liked the game. They're into it. Good song. Fabulous song. And I know most of the words. Good. You ready to sing? No. Okay. They wave out Turjan. Now it'll be Eastwood in the faceoff with Ronald Petrovicki, the Slovakian. Blues control the puck. Here's Reardon. Just over five minutes to go in regulation. Young ahead to Turjan. Nice move. He gets taken down. Young cannot get around Conroy. On with Petrovicki and Clark. Young, Stillman, and Turjan. Young trailing Turjan. Here's Young with a buck and a shot off Morris. Stillman gets dragged down, sweeps the buck towards the net, and Regeer takes over. Up the boards for Petrovicki, slowed up by Young. Young flips the puck behind the net. Derek Morris in possession for Calgary. Both teams are changing. Blues have been outshot 8-4 here in this third period. Now Derek Morris with Mellonby there. And Barteshko. Lubos Barteshko. Bumped by Morris to Reisner. A little soft pass for Mellonby. And then shoots the puck over the crossbar. Mellonby leads the puck. Morris and Barteshko battle. Now Scott Mellonby can't go to the point. Morris gets the puck, flips it into the blue zone. Racing back Sasha Havanoff, 4 11 to go. Blues up 2 to 1. All the scoring in the first. Mellonby gets the puck out. Lidman for Calgary. Albaline shoots it right back in. Aginla can't get the puck. Lidman does. And a shot by Savard headed behind the net. Good play by Turek to deflect that puck into the crowd with 3.55 to go in the third period. Before the break, a great defensive play. Keith Kachuk just trying to get in. You see the great defensive play here. Good long reach by Albaline there as he reached by. If he wouldn't have got the puck first, this would have been a penalty, but because he got the puck first and then ended up tripping Kachuk, there's no penalty call. So great defensive effort there by that man there, Tommy Albaline. Blues trying to put together back-to-back -to -back victories. They won an overtime Wednesday night, 1-0 at Minnesota. On the Scott Young goal, they lead here 2-1 in Calgary. 3.55 to go in regulation. Last time they won two in a row, Kenny would have been the homestand there. They beat San Jose 7-2, and they beat somebody else. They beat uh, Boston 3-2, and then beat San Jose 7-2, and then didn't win for seven games until the overtime win in Minnesota. Back in the first half of the season, they used to win four or five in a row with regularity, but that was a healthy Blues team in October, November, and December. January, February, and March have been totally different because of all the injuries. They've become just another team, unfortunately. But boy, the potential is there if the team can get the players back healthy. Here's Hesht to Kachuk. 
Kachuk bumped by Chance gets the puck over the line. Tommy Alboli. Chance can't go very far. Gusarov, man, he gets his back slammed to the boards by Weimer. And the puck in the Calgary zone. Here's Will. Boy, what do you always say when the season starts? Somebody says, well, how do you think the Blues will do? Boy, they got a lot of talent. If they stay healthy, you always say that. That's one of the first things you say. Icing is the call against Calgary. If they stay healthy. And you, I don't care if it's an average team or a great team like Joel Quinville has. How many points? How, well, if they stay healthy, and they haven't been able to stay healthy this season. No question, Kenny. And it's key people. You want to have your key people stay healthy. You just can't be as competitive when you don't have Chris Bronger, you don't have Al McInnes. Demetrius has been out for an awful long time, and so when you, those key people, Hansus was a key part of this team. He was out for a long time, of course, now with the trade, but every team that goes through serious injuries to their stars are the ones that suffer, and that's what's happened with the Blues, as you said, in the last couple of months. And the expectation is Pronger will be back before the end of the regular season. There's hope that Al McInnes with a contact lens will be able to see well enough to play. There's hope that Tyson Nash, who's had knee surgery, is coming along, that he'll be back, maybe get to play a little before the end of the regular season. Demetra is a little mystified with that hamstring after the cut in the back of the leg above the knee, but one would think, one would hope at least, that he'll be ready to go for the playoffs. You get this Blues team 100% healthy, and they might well be the best team in the NHL. Absolutely. I got to Chris just between the second and third period, and he goes to x-rays on Tuesday, so he's feeling real good. He expects, hopefully, to play, if all goes well, the last week of the season. 2.35 to go. The Blues have the lead. Hill gives the puck up, doesn't get it out, but Young is there to take it. It's two to one. Young flips the puck in. Mark Savard. Blues want to keep with the short shifts. Be patient. Don't take any chances. Barteshko with Reisner and Mellenby. They lose it again. Look. Moving in on Gusarov and having off with Bure. And again, look, can't get the shot. Mellenby trying to protect the puck. Slaps it in the corner for Havanaugh. And he'll clear it down the ice. Will not go far enough, fast enough for icing. Two minutes to go in regulation. Here at the Pengrove Saddle Dome in Calgary, Mellenby gets the puck. The Blues lead it 2-1 with Reisner, who takes the pass in the corner. Reisner tied up by Lidman. Barteshko can't go anywhere. The shots are 24 aside. And here's Mark Savard. So the Blues, four shots in the period. Calgary has had a total of eight. Again, left for the Flames. 1.27 to go. Kachuk can't move the puck up the boards. Avanoff gets it ahead. Kachuk can't get it out. Drake gives it to him again, and this time he clears it out. Regeer back. Gives the puck to Burrett. He has Calgary's only goal. It was a power play goal after the Blues had a 2 0 lead. Burrett's goal at 12 10 of the first period, the last scoring we've seen. Now there's going to be a penalty. Last one of the now check it. Uh, going to the bench with a minute to go. Brathway. Here's Weimer. So Calgary pulls their goalie. They take a shot there and a save by Turek, but there was a hand pass by Calgary, a hand pass. So to the bench goes Brathway. We're now down to 49.9 seconds to go. Calgary tried very hard to get the tying goal. Well, Tony Twist and Kelly Chase have for years tried very hard to help the Gateway Locomotive Special Hockey Program. And one of the benefits they put on is the Twist and Chase Charity Hockey Game. It's coming up Friday, April 6th, out of the USI Sports Complex in Chesterfield. It'll be the St. Louis Blues Legends against the St. Louis media and celebrities. Tickets available. Call 314-951-7600. That is always a fun event. Well, the way the Blues jumped out early, Bernie, Leading 2 0, 9 14 into the first period. You thought this might be one of those 4 1 or 5 1 games, but it's been tight most of the way. It really has. It looked like it was going to be wide open, but a 2 1 game still, and it very well may stay that way, I hope. But the Flames with some good opportunities, and it's just amazing that you see them when they get their chances, they don't really want to pass it. Here's the turnover, and you'll see this becomes a 3 on 2, but again, Ginla tries to go. 
end to end and tries to take the shot himself and trying to set up and make a pass there. Good coverage there by Goose Rob knocking down again, love, but. This is a team, I think, that really needs to use each other a little more, and that's the big line. That's again Labure and Savard, and they've not been using each other, and you can't play this game when you don't pass. With a neutral faceoff, Brathwaite comes back on the ice, stationed just inside the blue line. 49.9 seconds away from their second straight win of the Blues. A win that would move them to within a game or two points of Detroit. And they've got a game in hand on the wings. Brathwaite back to the bench. Kachuk can't get the puck in his control, but gets it out. Young slaps it ahead, an empty net. Here's Valerie Burre, 32 seconds to go. Burre might just try to go end to end. Here he comes. He'll take a shot. High and wide off the glass. Conroy taken out. 21 seconds. Puck in front. Here's Morris, a shot. Great save. Rebound and direct. Has the puck covered. We're down to 15.9 seconds remaining. Can the Blues hold on? Another big save by Roman Turek, and this is where the puck always goes to the front of the net. The Flames just dummy it out. A good shot here by Morris to get this up over top there of Kachuk, who was sliding. So good work there, and then everybody converging on the front of the net, but good luck from this other angle. This one right into the center of Roman Turek. There's the shot, there's the save, and Turk finds it very quickly and covers up. That's another big save by Roman Turk. There's the overhead look. Everybody converging on the front of the net. What a save again by Turk. You can see how quickly he got that right mid down. Ready for the faceoff, 15.9 seconds to go. Calgary with six skaters inside the St. Louis blue line. Eastwood waved out, Turgeon to face off with Savard. Calgary trying to force overtime. Boy, oh boy, to imagine as well as Detroit's gone. They lost today, only their second loss in their last 20 games. And if the Blues can win it, they'll be only two points behind them with a game in hand. Against the Islanders. All right, Tuesday night. Savard, Turgeon ready to go. Housley at the right point, Morris at the near left point. Burray in the corner with a puck, sends it to the net. Turek grabs it. Now 12.1 seconds remaining in the third period. Now there's another perfect example. Why would you throw that puck in the air to the side of the net? That has to be dumped back out into the slot area where you got everybody going. But Bray with a backhander about three feet high, easy for Roman Turk just to catch it. So you see here, what are you shooting it there for? You're going to shoot it back into the middle here somewhere so that someone can get a shot. So good coverage again by the Blues. Savard back to Morris, trying to get it over to Housley. Seven seconds in front, they score! Again, Law with 5.4 seconds to go. Jerome Aginla, and they go crazy here in Calgary as the Flames tie it at two. A big faceoff, and that's what you have to do. The Blues lost the faceoff. Good work by Morris to get it over to Housley, and Housley, you know what he's doing. He's going to always shoot it along the ice. All the traffic in front, but you'll see it right off the faceoff. They win the faceoff. Good effort here. The pass across the house. And I look at the crowd in front of the net. The shot through traffic, and there's a game all by himself to chip it into the open net. The same way that Burry scored his goal. Same position here. The puck deflects through. Again, led to the open net. We're tied at two. Again, La with his 27th faceoff at center ice. And a Turgeon shot deflects into the crowd. Brathwaite back in the net. 1.7 seconds to go in the third. So overtime is looming. And of course, two weeks ago tonight, it was 2-2 between these teams here going into overtime. And Mark Savard scored to give Calgary the win. So that's going to do it. Overtime is next. Calgary gets a point. The Blues get a point. So the Blues now are only three points behind. Strong bid to get the goal that gets me the extra point. Here's a Gidla, and he shoots just wide. So defense is not the name of the game for the Blues. Four on four, they go after it. Gusarov, Havanoff, Kachuk, and Young. Calgary with Savard. Burry out there now, they're already changing. Morris and Regeer. Here's Young to Kachuk. 
He'll force his way after the puck. Regeer beats him to it. Now Kachuk and Morris. Pass Young intercepts, shoots. Oh, halfway. Big save on Scott Young. Here's Craig Conroy. Boy, you can almost see the headline catcher. Conroy <laughs> wins it in overtime. Oh, man. Poke check there. Wouldn't that be tough to see? Here comes Corey Stillman, or maybe Corey Stillman wins it in overtime. The pass just out of the reach of Turgeon. Turgeon, Stillman, Finley, and Reardon. Calgary on the attack, a minute into overtime. Puck shot in by Lidman. Around far side, Finley leaves the puck. Turgeon to Stillman, tied up by Housley. Housley's your perfect overtime player. Don't care about defense, and he can play the offensive side. Finley into the corner. Leaves the puck for Todd Reardon. Calgary with some impressive four checking here in the first minute and a half of the five minute overtime period. Not even allowing the Blues for the most part to be in the offensive zone. Lidman a shot, stick save, and Jochen Hest with a puck. Well, let's go. Here's Hest with Reasoner. Moving in, Andre Gear who takes down Hest. Reasoner trying to get the puck from Lidman. Havanoff will pinch in. Havanoff loses a stick, kicks the puck over, and Gusarov has to come to center ice. 3.05 to go in the game. Marty Reisner with a puck. It's 2-2. It's overtime. Hesh, poke check. Aginla to Savard, who won it two weeks ago tonight. To Aginla. Nice poke check by Reisner. Very good play by Marty Reisner. Aginla takes the shot, blocks. Havanoff whacks the puck out to center ice. 2-2, it's overtime. Now the puck shot in from the flame side of center. They're going to wave off icing. Both teams are changing. 2.32 to go in this one. Can the Blues get the goal that'll get them two points instead of one? Gooser off to Young. He's been the go-to guy. His shot partially blocked. Housley up the right wing. Gets the puck ahead to Burre. Now to Conroy, to Burre. Stolen away by Young. Back on the play, Morris. He's a good one. Young knocks the puck ahead. Runs into Morris. Can't get around him. And it's Conroy again. His pass knocked away. Young shoots. Bradway stops him again. Kachuk can't get a shot. Here's Kachuk with under two minutes to go to Hill. A shot the save. And a rebound to Burray. Valerie Burray. He's got the Jets. Here he comes. Reardon starts hacking at him. Into the corner. Wilm against Hill. 145 remaining. In front of the lead, and he shoots wide. Lidman centers right out in front. Burray beaten to the puck by Hill. Hill loses the puck. Will to Lidman. His shot caught by Turek, and he'll hold it to stop play with a minute 31 to go in the game here in overtime. Did Albaline have a good chance or what? Walking in from the right point, and he shot wide. Roman Turek has been very, very good tonight. But the Flames with the best going chance so far in the overtime. The Blues with good work as Kachuk was in on top of the Calgary zone. Here you see the turn off here. There is Young shot, steered away. Stillman shot that was just barely deflected there by Pierre Turgeon. There's the best going chance there. That was Young and then Kachuk kept going, wasn't able to get a shot away. So. They're going for it. Can he get to stay base with Detroit? This is the game in hand. You need two points here. Yeah, you need the extra point. The Blues now, after 72 games, have at least 94 points. Detroit's played one more game. They have three more points. Shots in overtime, 4-3, favoring the Blues. Here's Finley with Havanoff. Turgeon, Hesch, Turgeon. Loses the puck, gets it ahead offside. Had to make that last move. Just through the timing off, the Blues are offside. 118 to go in this contest. The Blues early goals, Kachuk and Stillman. 224, 914 of the first. Burray, a goal at 12-10 of the first. Then it remained 2-1 Blues until 1954 of the third, when again tied it. So Terja will face off with Aginla. 118 on the clock. The Blues in their 20th overtime game of the season. And there hasn't been one that hasn't been exciting. Turgeon flips the puck in. Kachuk after it. Lidman after him. 
Good shot. Trying to get in front. Here's a shot. Reardon a save. Turgeon looking for the punt. Trying to get it on a stick. Does a minute three to go. Turgeon. Ooh, a pass intercepted. Mark Savar with a Ginla. And Morris on the near side. Reardon breaks up the play. The pass by Havanoff to himself doesn't work. Reardon loses his stick. Now 50 seconds to go. Behind the net, here's Havanoff. Now to Reardon, who just gets his stick back. It's overtime, the last 40 seconds right in front of you. Can the Blues get the goal? It'll get them one point closer to Detroit. Trying to win the Central Division. Here's Hesht. Hesht on Albaline. Hesht takes a shot. Draft weight the save, and he's able to smother the rebound. And the clock stopped with 24.8 seconds to go. Yelkin has by Albaline flat footed there. He just came out of the box. He had no speed. Good move here. Tried to stop it on that short side. Pretty bad. Brathwaite was out of position, was able to reach back. But you'll just see here, Abilene was not going fast enough. Hash with a good power move to the outside. Banked it off the side of the net. But Brathwaite able to go ahead and get his glove on it there and his stick before it would come loose. Now we get a timeout call. So each team has called a timeout. This is the Blues timeout. Calgary had theirs earlier. Yeah, Joel just wants to rest the guys. He's going to have the same key people out there. I would assume that we're going to have probably Turgeon and Kachuk out there. I would be surprised if Scotty Young and maybe Havanov are the four people that we see. Well, the Blues with at least a point here in their 72nd game. We talk about the battle with Detroit. Now Detroit has played 73 games. After this, Bernie, the Blues will have played 72. Detroit with two more wins. That's why it would be nice to put another win into this category so that it would go to 95 points and 41 wins. So that would be nice. And then just trail the Red Wings by two points. If they win that extra game in hand, then all of a sudden they're tied for the lead in the Central with one more game against each other, too, in Detroit. And I believe that the Blues have a much easier schedule than Detroit does. Detroit still has Colorado at home. The Blues do have Colorado at home as well. But the Blues are playing teams below 500, I believe, in, in six of their last ten. And I think Detroit only has uh, under 500 teams only for three of the games. From the point! Oh, the save by Brathwaite. He really didn't see it well on Young shot. Here's a Ginla around Young. Young is back. The backhander off the post. Rebound. Conroy into the corner. Ten seconds to go. Lidman. The shot. Block. Blues can't get the puck out. Four seconds. Now they just need to preserve the situation. And that's going to do it. This one is over. Well, Calgary comes very close, Bernie, to duplicating what they did two weeks ago tonight here. Jerome Aginla with a great chance as he chipped the puck past Scott Young and went down on his off wing and took the backhander that went off the far post.